In this video, we're going to generate images with DALI, save them to a database along with the images descriptions and their embeddings, effectively creating a vector store. And then we'll be able to perform searches and then save the search results to a separate folder for easy access. I think this is pretty cool and useful. I think this can be adapted to many different use cases. The main point of this exercise is to really bring together a lot of the things that I've been working on, like databases, embeddings, generations, vector search. And I'm just going to bring them together in different ways. So I'm going to try to make some rapid fire videos in the next few days exploring some projects i hope you like this so let's begin code files for this project will be available at my patreon link is in the description so when we run this app we get an option to generate images or search for similar images let's go ahead and generate let's generate robots in space in a round table discussion then it asks us how many images we want to generate let's say three so now we are going to generate those images in parallel using DALI API. And right after that, we're going to make a call to GPT Vision, again, in parallel, get their descriptions. And I save the file names, the descriptions, and then get their embeddings, again, in parallel, and save the embeddings. As you can see, we already got the uh, images here. Just click on them. And then now we are getting the descriptions in parallel. Uh, this was one of the images. And we are also saving them to DB as they become available right here, robots in space, along with their embedding, so we can perform similarity search. These three are the images we've created. Okay, pretty cool. And their descriptions are said, I put a max 500 tokens, so some of them may be cut off, but uh, you can also save JSON descriptions just by changing the prompt to the vision model. If I were to add here, describe this image in detail, but in a, a JSON format, as a, as a JSON object, now, if we rerun it and generate new images, let's go for a city skyline, three images. See, uh, now the description is arriving as a JSON. So I'm not sure which one is better. This really depends. Maybe it requires some research on which one really, whichever one returns a better similarity search, obviously, is better. Uh, I haven't tested it, but uh, just to show you, you can do both. As you can see, the last three items in the database now have JSON descriptions. Now, this is going to get cut off too because of, because of mix 500 tokens limit. You can increase the limit, but I thought, well, we're not going to really use this JSON or this description. This is solely for the purpose of similarity search. So all in all, uh, I think uh, this is an interesting application. Let's talk about how we can build something like this. If you like my projects, do check out my Patreon. I have over 200 projects such as this one, uh, and you'll have access to all of them. If you do decide to become a patron, just know that I appreciate it very much and thank you for your support. So for this project, we're going to use SQLite and also AIO SQLite library to do async SQLite operations because we will be using async IO to do, to do calls in parallel to DALI 3, GPT Vision, and the embedding endpoint. We are also using the GPT calls class that I have created, which just pretty much has many utilities such as message history and trimming of the message history and all the necessary calls that we can use to craft the uh, LLM powered apps uh, so much more efficiently. If you'd like to know more about it, please watch the OpenAI Unified API video. Link will be in the description. But it's just regular uh, OpenAI API calls. We're just going to be using some of those methods to save on writing a lot of lines of code. So for this project, we are defining a class and we are importing the GPT calls class from the OpenAI Unified.py file. We are defining a DB path, and DB path is going to be images async.db. We do initialize the GPT calls uh, instance with, to be able to use async and JSON mode. And then we run this method, setupDB. So we set up a DB when we first initialize this class with an ID, file name, description, and embedding. Important thing to note is that embedding is a list of long list of float numbers, and there are different ways you can store it in SQLite, and one of the ways is, uh, blah, is a blob up object so we initialize our db and then we create an images folder just in case if it doesn't exist we have a save image data to a database file which is going to take the file name its description and embeddings for each image and just insert it into the database next up we have the generate describe store image which is just going to take in an image prompt and this is an async function and we are awaiting the gpt clients generate image async method and it's going to take in a prompt and it is save and show parameters uh, I can show you if you go into this. It's just a call to Dali, and uh, save is just so this this method can automatically save and show the image. But we since we're gonna do all of the processing ourselves in this app, we just set them to false. You can also take keyword arguments, 
that's why that's why we are setting the quality to HD. Normally speaking, if you don't change it, then it will return standard quality images. Then we do have to convert it to get the B64 JSON and then uh, decode that B64 object into image bytes. And then we create an image file name from the uh, prompt. So that's why you see this flying submarines here. And we get the first uh, two words and then the rest of it, we use daytime to actually identify each individual image with a uh, daytime uh, object down to the millisecond. We have this if else statement to check if just in case if the prompt was had less than two words uh, so that we can handle that. And then we simply just write it and under the images folder. So we'll, we'll have them all in there. Right after that, within the same function, we're going to await the GPT clients get GPT vision response async. It just makes a call to GPT for vision. This one takes in a question, which in this case, it also takes in a file name. So it's going to open one of these files, right? Whichever one we pass. So, and the question is describe this image in detail as a JSON object, include all relevant detail plus color themes. Settings, you feel free to modify this. This will obviously change the kind of description you get from the API. And I, right after that, we're going to call the get embeddings async, which is just going to make a call to OpenAI embeddings and uh, using text embeddings three large. This is the new embeddings model. And then get the embeddings. And then it's going to call the save image data, which is the uh, method we've seen up here. It's going to take all those three uh, file name, description, and embeddings and add it to our SQLite database. So since this is an async function, in the next run generation method, we actually bring it all together. This is going to take in our prompt and number of images. And since we are using uh, async IO, actually this, this step is probably redundant, but here, there it is anyway, because we initialize it in the beginning. Async IOs.gather works with a list of tasks. So what you do is ahead of time, you describe to async IO which tasks to run. In this case, we want to run the generate, describe, generate and describe store image method, which we just looked at. And but we want to run it for as many times as we have specified in the number of images. This is just going to create a, a list of tasks to run. And async IO gather those tasks and run it. So therefore they're going to all execute in parallel. So the we're so the generation of the image and then its description and then its embeddings is going to happen sequentially for but for however many images we've specified, those are all going to happen in parallel. Doesn't matter if you select three or three hundred, doesn't matter. If you like the if you like a better way of searching my videos, maybe a quick way, you can go to my website, echohive.live, and here you can search for anything you're looking for, such as embeddings, and it'll show you all the videos. You can read their descriptions and find the code download links if you're a patron. While you're there, check out the, one of my most successful apps that I built recently, Auto Streamer, which auto creates contents, lets you record it and live stream because it generates and builds course websites in real time. There's a live stream there you can watch which demonstrate its capabilities. There's also a link to a website that it had built during the live stream. Raising exceptions. It is actually a Python course, which you can use to brush up on your Python. So that's it. So this kind of concludes our generation process, but then we have the search images method. This is where we are using the AIO SQLite to connect to the database. This is going to take in a query and like top end, this is how many results we want to return. Normally speaking, when you are performing similarity search, you have to perform the similarity search throughout the entire database anyway. So you're just going to sort it and then re-rank it based on similarity. But you you just probably want to see the top three or top five, something like that. Feel free to change this. So we get the data and then we, of course, we're going to compare embeddings versus embeddings. So we have to get the embedding for the query as well, whatever the search term will be. We create a similarities list and we the interesting part with this because i've done this previously before but in my previous videos we were performing simulated search all in parallel which is obviously a better approach perhaps uh, but it's also you know difficult to pull off and a lot of things can go wrong it just can become complicated uh, async and parallel processes are inherently more difficult to debug so here in this case we're actually performing sequential search and I haven't really stress tested this, but for whatever I tested up to like a few dozen images, it's actually super fast, like getting of the embedding of the query plus performing similarity search across the entire database is like very, very, but so negligible. So just keep that in mind. We loop over the images data, which we have retrieved. 
we get the embeddings and uh, we perform simulated search using the uh, GPT calls classes, simulated search async. This is just pretty much uh, using a cosine similarity from scikit-learn. Uh, very easy stuff, really. And when we just perform this for each embedding, right? For, so we have a search query and then we have that search query uh, do some matrix multiplication for each row of our database against the embeddings. Then we get the similarities, we append it to the similarities list. We just simply sort it and reverse it. So we have the highest at the top. So then now we have our similarities list. So now we're again going to connect to our database with AIO SQLite. Then we're going to loop over the top end many similarities. And then we're going to match the IDs of, the, of those and fetch the file name and description. And we just simply print it. We print the file name, description, and similarity. And then we split the query words. This is this is exactly what we've done for generating the file name. We want to get the search term, split it, and then create some kind of a folder name based on that. And then we create a folder within the search, such as when I search for in the air, we created this folder. And then we use shuttle to copy those images into that folder. So those images remain in the images folder, but they're also copied into the search folder. So this way, when you perform a search, each search item is actually moved into its own folder. So this is this may seem redundant, but at least you know which images were relevant. You can use them, and when you're done, you can actually delete those uh, folders. And then we have our run app, which is like our main function. We again call the setup DB. This is uh, three times now, it's redundant, but there it is. Uh, and I, within a while through loop, we take in a user choice each time whether to generate images by by using G or S to to perform search or exit. And if we have G, we take in user input and then we run the generation process. If it's S, then we do search images and then we just initialize and run the app. Uh, and uh, we can do that right now. So we're going to choose to generate images. You can say a cute robot learning the code. And then it's asking us how many images to generate. Let's again select three. This part takes uh, about 10 to 15 seconds. So we are mainly waiting on DALI after that with the um, vision is going to kick in uh, since we're using streaming responses. We'll know when, when that starts. There we go. We are actually getting the first image. Yep. All, all three of them are here. And then the description is incoming. After that, we get the embeddings, which is very quick. Save it to database. Let's take a look. So if you look at the images, these are the images we just got. And then next we can perform search. Uh, maybe let's, if we type in learning, let's see what comes up. Let's see, it created this learning folder and it put in the first image is a cute robot. So obviously this was the first one. The next one is ancient philosophers and it's this one, obviously all very appropriate. How about if we were to search for a city? Oh, you do have to go back in the search again to the perform search city. As you can see, we're printing the descriptions as well. And we created a new folder called city. Yeah, we got it. What if we were to search for, let's say, green? Oh, again, we have to go in the search. You can change that if you like. So green, okay, you still have green views. So obviously, we're not searching the image itself, but we're searching the description. So the more detailed the description, the better the search is going to work. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, this was a fun project for me. I have a few more like this coming up. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. If you are new to GPT's API and want to get started, you can check out another app I built called codehive.app. Here, you, there's over 900 free Python, GPT-powered Python chat applications. So you can click on any one of them. Here is the code. You can copy it, run it, get some inspiration. You can you know, just browse around and see if there's something you like. And if you do want to download all of them, you can download them at Patreon for $100. Also, I have built another free app called fastpython.app.railway.app. The link will be to all these will be in the description. This is a really interesting, cool app. I actually have a video on this as well. It allows you to quickly explore some Python concepts. Uh, you just click on your level, and then it gives you some Python concepts. If you know about these, then you can refresh the topics. It'll give you a new topic, so you can refresh it again, and then again, and then whenever you see something that is interesting, just click on it, and it'll give you a quick refresher, and then you can quickly just click a few times and learn, learn a few things, and then just move on. There's also this number. You can increase this. 
to get more more detailed information if you want it. There we go. Now it's longer. So you can use this, share it with others if you find it useful. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.